Welcome back to Debunked, right here on CBR, where all those crazy rumors you keep reading on websites like ours are fact-checked by a team of CBR pop culture scientists with lab coats and clipboards. All of us here at CBR work tirelessly day and night in our special truth-testing lab, hidden miles below the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri, to ensure you have only the best in internet rumors. One of the craziest rumors our scientists have come across is the fan theory that Spider-Man's beloved Uncle Ben, the most important character in Spider-Man's development, doesn't exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. See, in Spider-Man Homecoming, we meet Spider-Man in the middle of his heroic journey. The movie doesn't bother with the origin story, and since Uncle Ben dies in the origin story, fans haven't seen any evidence that Uncle Ben is or ever was in the MCU. And our team of experts think this theory is just a stack of Aunt May's wheat cakes, and it's about to get debunked. So let's take a good hard look at old Webhead, because we're sure you'll agree with us. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there must be an Uncle Ben. For over 50 years, generations of fans have loved and followed the adventures of the Amazing Spider-Man, easily one of the most popular heroes created by the Marvel House of Ideas, the continuing story of the kid that does whatever a spider can has captured imaginations all over the world. From his first appearance in 1962's Amazing Fantasy No. 15, all the way up to being pixelated away at the end of Avengers Infinity War, the Amazing Spider-Man's loyal fans have come to expect non-stop action. <laughs> Corny wisecracks. Iron Man! Hey, what are you doing robbing the bank? You're a billionaire! Swinging on webs when we have no idea where they're anchored. And, of course, at the end of the day, we all count on Spider-Man's alter ego, the nerdy Peter Parker, to overcome all odds and lift that big heavy machine over his head and do the right thing. One of the things that makes Spider-Man so popular is his motivation as a character. Unlike Captain America, he's not a hero because he's just supposed to be. Unlike Iron Man, he's not a hero because he's a billionaire philanthropist who believes he can change the world and make it a better place. And unlike Black Panther, he's not a hero because he's the heir to a legacy of royalty. Spider-Man is unique among heroes because his crime-fighting career is motivated almost entirely by guilt and trying to atone for one very large error in judgment very early in his career. Everybody knows the story of the nerdy high school kid who gets bitten by a radioactive spider and, instead of getting cancer like the rest of us, This is not how I imagined I would die. The kid gains the proportionate strength and agility of a spider as well as the ability to create chemical compounds that nobody else can think of despite being a high school junior. And apparently, he even has the ability to sew up a fancy schmancy bodysuit that somehow allows him to stick to walls through the suit. We don't know if Spider-Man's ever tried to walk on a hardwood floor in just his socks, but it's not easy. However he did it, good for him. Well, instead of using these powers to, say, suddenly acquire a lot more stuff, or beat up the jocks at school who've picked on him since kindergarten, he decided to do what any normal kid from Queens would do go into show business. So while kids his age are learning to drive and make fake IDs, Peter Parker's going on Jimmy Kimmel Live and participating in amateur versus professional wrestling contests, which seem like lawsuits waiting to happen, but whatever. If you're a Spider-Man fan, you have a tendency to overlook things that don't always make sense. After one of these TV appearances, Peter Parker's feeling all arrogant and full of himself, and he lets a thief get away from the office of the show he just appeared in. Now, while that seems like a sure way to not get asked back to that show and get yourself blackballed from the industry, it's still what he does. And in an ironic twist, Peter returns to his home to find the police investigating a robbery and murder right there in his home. And as it turns out, Peter's beloved uncle, who raised little Peter from a young boy, was murdered by the exact same thief. This thief, who seems to not only be on a serious crime spree that night, but also has the ability to travel from Manhattan to Queens in record time, eventually gets his butt handed to him by an enraged spider kid, who eventually hands the black and blue burglar to New York's finest. Sam Raimi upped the ante in his Spider-Man movie when he not only made Peter not so much an arrogant jerk, but a self-righteous and indignant jerk who didn't stop the robber because the promoter who just got robbed stiff young Peter out of his winnings after beating Randy Macho Man Savage in a wrestling match. Ooh, no! Then the robber, as he's getting away, jacks a car and murders the driver, who, sure as can be, is Peter's beloved Uncle Ben. And Peter finds Uncle Ben shot and bleeding in the street, and instead of administering first aid or 
using his spider strength to summon an ambulance, yet again mugs for the camera and ugly cries as he gets the great power and great responsibility speech from Uncle Ben in what can only be described as a very economical compression of the Spider-Man story from Amazing Fantasy. In the last two panels of the Spider-Man story in Amazing Fantasy 15, a teary-eyed Peter Parker realizes that he could have prevented his uncle's death if he just acted like a good member of the community. He didn't even need spider powers. He could have just clotheslined the crook like anybody else. But for whatever reason, Parker makes the connection that he needs to use his new abilities for good. And now, this punk kid spent the last 50 years trying to appease his guilty conscience and atone for this moment of selfishness. In the comics, as well as in some of the Spider-Man movies, Uncle Ben was presented as a moral compass for young Peter, acting as an old-fashioned father figure who not only bought the young science nerd his first microscope, but is also quick to scold the underclassmen when he mouths off to his beloved Aunt May. It seems Ben instilled a very strong sense of right and wrong in the young Spider-Man, but not strong enough that he wouldn't be a jerk for a short while and let a thief and a killer get away when he could have stopped him. Again, Spider-Man fans overlook a lot of things that don't make sense. One of the most recent and most popular incarnations of Spider-Man was the Spider-Man we first met in that massive fight scene in Captain America's Civil War, when Spider-Man's appropriately manhandled by Captain America. Now this served as Spider-Man's long-awaited introduction into the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it opened the door for what some fans call the best adaptation of Spider-Man outside of the comics. Which, gotta say, that's awesome. Spider-Man Homecoming, one of the top 10 highest grossing out of all 54 Marvel Cinematic adaptions to date. Yes, we are counting Howard the Duck, Man-Thing, and Ben Affleck's Daredevil. It's our video and we can count them if we want. We aren't counting the Captain America movie from the 90s that came out only on video. Nor are we counting Roger Corman's punchline of a movie, Fantastic Four. Frankly, the less said about those movies, the better. But with Spider-Man Homecoming, we're finally given a delightfully rare treat when starting or rebooting a franchise. We got a superhero movie without an origin story weighing it down. Why eat up a third of a movie telling a story we've already seen at least three times already? The first time was on TV in the 70s, when Peter apparently wore a lot of hairspray. Then again, in 2002 Spider-Man, where Tobey Maguire got the mug for the camera. And then 10 years later, in Amazing Spider-Man, and by then, pretty much everybody knew it was coming. If you could do good things for other people, you had a more Our opinion is this. If we ask our moms, and they know the origin story of your movie's hero, you don't need to tell it, and you can get right into the story. The radioactive spider story is about as much a part of our culture as Santa Claus or the Wolfman. Everybody just seems to be born knowing the story. But because there's no origin story in Spider-Man Homecoming, and we're cannonballed into the middle of Spider-Man's story, we meet some of the traditional Spider-Man supporting cast. Mary Jane Watson, who they keep calling Michelle in the movie, and her friends keep calling her MJ, but we know she's Mary Jane, don't we? As well as characters named Ned, Liz, Betty, and Flash, whose last names are never mentioned, but we know who they are. We even meet Peter's feeble and elderly Aunt May. Now, wait a minute. In Homecoming, Aunt May isn't a blue-haired senior citizen at all. She's actually, well, she's pretty much a stunningly attractive, not quite middle-aged woman who appears to be in her early 40s. She's so stunning that she even makes Tony Stark say hubba hubba. Well, he doesn't actually say hubba hubba, but you know what we mean. Hey, May. How you doing? What are you wearing? Something skimpy, I hope. <laughs> Let's get back to the theory that Uncle Ben doesn't exist. It's really nice to have somebody to talk to. It's time to take a good look at what we know about Ben Parker and his place in the Spider-Man mythos. First of all, after making a killing in the instant rice industry, Uncle Ben retired to a quiet home in Forest Hills, Queens. No, that's not right. We, okay, we made that up. The truth is this. In the comics, which mercifully the Marvel Cinematic Universe doesn't get too far away from, Ben Parker is the brother of Peter's father, Richard Parker. Uncle Ben and his wife May Riley were awarded custodial rights to young Peter Parker when his parents, Richard and Mary Parker, who were both United States government agents, were killed by the Red Skull. Now, all of this was revealed in 1968's Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 8, and Peter's parents are rarely mentioned ever again. For all intents and purposes, Ben and May were the only parents young Peter knew. Now, what a lot of fans don't know is that Uncle Ben's first appearance in Marvel Comics actually precedes Spider-Man by a few months. Spider-Man's first appearance in Amazing Fantasy 15 was published in August of 1962, but a few months earlier, in June, Marvel published Strange Tales No. 97, which included the story, Goodbye to Linda Brown. This story, with story and art by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, 
introduced two characters named Aunt May and Uncle Ben, who look an awful lot like their counterparts in Amazing Fantasy, and they care for a girl in a wheelchair who is later revealed to be a mermaid. See, in those early Marvel pre-superhero comics, they usually had three or four stories with an O. Henry type twist ending, like say the indestructible astronaut was really a robot, or that the mighty warrior Tim Boo Ba was actually microscopic and couldn't invade Earth because he was too small. The girl being a mermaid was the twist ending. You want to talk about a twist ending? I see dead people. Okay, well, with Marissa Tomei as the smoking hot Aunt May, it's safe to assume that Uncle Ben is also insanely attractive. I mean, women who look like this don't marry guys who look like this, unless the guy has a ton of money. So let's presume that the person who casts the Marvel Cinematic Universe is smart enough to pair Aunt May with someone equally mature but attractive. You know, like George Clooney. Surprise! Although, come to think of it, Clooney himself said he single-handedly ruined the Batman franchise. Let's hope he doesn't do the same thing to the Spider-Man franchise. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. Anyway, the first clue we have that the Uncle Ben doesn't exist theory is baloney is the familial aspect. May Parker, canonically, has no blood relation to Peter at all. While she may be the most insanely attractive version of May Parker in history, there's no reason to believe that the writers gave it so much thought that she's no longer the former May Riley, but now she's suddenly Richard Parker's sister. Even as Spider-Man fans, we overlook a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense, but this is a lot to swallow. We as fans are willing to accept that a guy can walk up walls, we're willing to accept that a soldier from World War II can stay frozen in ice for 60 years and emerge fresh as a daisy, we're willing to accept that Doctor Strange can afford a huge house in the middle of Greenwich Village without having any visible means of support, but we gotta draw the line at making Aunt May a blood relative of Richard Parker. That's just going too far. By the way, many fans mistakenly give Uncle Ben the credit for the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. And while Cliff Robertson said it in one of the older Spider-Man movies, the phrase was actually first said by the narrator in Amazing Fantasy number 15, and not by any of the characters, including Uncle Ben. It's probably been retconned in the comics that he did say something like that, but there's still no denying that the phrase so closely associated with Spider-Man wasn't actually said by a character in the story, becoming the most famous narration box caption in comic book history. So without Uncle Ben, Spider-Man's just a jerk in pajamas who can stick to walls. All the nobility, all the heroism, all the motivation to be a hero in the first place is all rooted in the lessons learned by Peter Parker from the life and death of Uncle Ben. Third, it's just bad logic to say, in a story, that something simply doesn't exist if it's not mentioned, especially in a story ostensibly set in the same real world we all live in. By using the same reasoning that says Uncle Ben doesn't exist because he hasn't been mentioned yet, it opens up the ridiculous possibility that billions of things don't exist in the MCU yet simply because they haven't been acknowledged in the movies. For example, here are some things that have never been mentioned in any Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, but we're pretty sure they exist in the MCU. Penguins, Waffle House, the National Hockey League, the state of Nebraska, 30-minute oil change shops, those Halloween stores that pop up everywhere in late August, and the list goes on and on. Now, we're pretty sure that all those things exist at the MCU, but they've never been expressly mentioned or demonstrated because, for example, if the Avengers were flying from New York to Los Angeles, both locations already mentioned in the MCU, and there was a big hole in the middle of the USA where Nebraska was, that would not only be bad storytelling, but it'd pull the audience right out of the story. To say that something doesn't exist because there hasn't been any mention of it yet not only is faulty logic, but it also sells the writers short by removing their ability to add things to the narrative later on. Don't forget that in 2008, when Marvel gave us Iron Man, there was no mention of Hulk, Black Widow, Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, or even Spider-Man. All those wonderful characters were eventually added over time, complete with a backstory and everything. And the same can be true for almost anyone or anything the writers want to add which will advance the story. And of course, as we debunk this theory, one of the things our scientists love to do is go right to the source. The writer-director team for Spider-Man Homecoming is Jonathan Goldstein and Francis Daly. And those guys were interviewed by Entertainment Weekly back in July of 2017 about their upcoming Spider-Man movie. In the interview, the guys said they had the intention of including Uncle Ben in the story. In fact, writer Francis Daly said, We did talk about there being a scene where May referenced him directly. It was when Peter was getting ready for homecoming and the wardrobe she was giving Peter was all Uncle Ben's clothes. It was a nice moment, but we also knew that it veered away from his arc. 
if you're going to talk about someone's death, you don't want it to be a throwaway. So if the writers included Uncle Ben's clothes in the screenplay, there must, must have been an Uncle Ben to wear them in the first place, right? This is a pretty clever way to bring Uncle Ben into the MCU without having to rehash the origin story for the umpteenth time. Great job, guys. And on top of this, remember in Captain America's Civil War when Peter told Iron Man, when you can do the things I can, but then you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. Well, that sure sounds like the kind of guilt trip that the comics version of Peter Parker's been on since Uncle Ben took a bullet in 1962. This doesn't explicitly reference the preventable murder of Ben Parker, but it implies it so heavily that it's unmistakable for Marvel fans like you. Now recently, rumors have popped up about the next movie in the franchise, Spider-Man Far From Home, which is due in theaters in July of 2019. One of the most scandalous rumors is a potential romantic partner for Aunt May. Now Aunt May's had her share of romance in the comics since Uncle Ben died. At one time, she was almost married to one of Spider-Man's deadliest enemies, Dr. Octopus. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. And in current Spider-Man comics, she's married to J. Jonah Jameson's father, making JJJ and that wall-crawling menace step-cousins. But the newest rumor is that Aunt May is going to pair up with one of the first characters we meet in the MCU. You remember the very first MCU movie, don't you? Iron Man, right? Well, the rumor is that there may be sparks flying in Spider-Man Far From Home between Aunt May and Happy Hogan. <laughs> You serious? You remember Tony Stark's buddy who looks an awful lot like the guy that was Foggy Nelson when Ben Affleck was Daredevil, don't you? Sure you do. Well, we don't know if there's any truth to this rumor, and we'll probably debunk it in an upcoming episode. But in the meantime, we're looking forward to the second Spider-Man movie kicking off what the studio is calling Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with new heroes, new adventures, and who knows, maybe a very happy replacement for Uncle Ben. But the bottom line is this. We think the Marvel Cinematic Universe has done a pretty good job keeping its heroes and villains true to their original counterparts in the comics. They've certainly done a better job than those TV movies in the 70s with Hulk, Spider-Man, Captain America, and Doctor Strange, which seem to have almost nothing to do with the comics. You screwed up. We've also read almost 60 years of Spider-Man comics, and we know that Uncle Ben is an essential element in the Spidey story. As much as web shooters, or Spider-Sense, or Aunt May, or the nerdy kid under the mask. Pizza time. If you change any of those elements, you end up with the aforementioned 70s Spider-Man from TV, or worse yet, the Japanese TV version of Spider-Man, where a guy in a Spider-Man suit fought bad guys in a giant Voltron robot. Neither of these were really Spider-Man, and both were a pretty far departure from the beloved character that Stan Lee and Steve Ditko created back in 1962. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has done a great job keeping Tony Stark, Captain America, Ultron, Vision, Guardians of the Galaxy, Red Skull, and countless other beloved Marvel characters true to their roots in the comics, and we don't see any reason why Spider-Man, arguably the best known of all Marvel heroes, should be any different. In fact, we'll go a step farther and say in some upcoming Spider-Man MCU movie we'll probably see the origin story again, where Uncle Ben will be there, presenting Peter Parker with his microscope and eating Aunt May's wheat cakes. We just haven't seen it. Yet. What we do know is that Spider-Man Far From Home will debut in theaters in the summer of 2019 and will feature Spider-Man and his friends from school in Europe, where Spider-Man meets Master of Illusion Mysterio, played by Jake Gyllenhaal. And when that movie hits the big screen, you can be sure that fans everywhere will generate even more theories about what's going to happen next in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And wherever there are MCU fan theories, we're there to make sure the bad ones get debunked. What do you think? Will George Clooney play the MCU's Uncle Ben, joining Michael Keaton as the Vulture? Hey, wait a minute. That'd be two former Batmans in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Does that mean we'll have a former Batman reunion in the MCU? Maybe Val Kilmer could play J. Jonah Jameson. We haven't seen him yet in the MCU. Christian Bale could play Dr. Octopus or the Lizard or what the heck, even the Gibbon. While we're at it, it's even possible Ben Affleck could play Daredevil. And if Ben Affleck is Daredevil, does that mean John Favreau is both Foggy Nelson and Happy Hogan? We think it would be cool if the actors could bring their characters into different movies. This opens up all kinds of possibilities for actors to play multiple roles, doesn't it? Maybe we'll see Chris Evans as Captain America and the Human Torch. Or two Human Torches with Captain America and Killmonger. Or maybe that Catwoman X-Men crossover with Halle Berry. Maybe fans will finally learn who will win a fight between Thanos, Cable, and Jonah Hex. Heck, why not dust off Dolph Lundgren and have the Punisher and he-Man 
movie we've all been waiting for. Well, we want to know what you think. Is Uncle Ben part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or is this some giant conspiracy on Marvel's part to change the characters of Spider-Man and Aunt May so there never was an Uncle Ben? Even though we think it's a dumb theory, we're open-minded enough to hear what you have to say. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below and tell us what you think the fate of Uncle Ben is in the MCU. Tell us what you think in the comments section below and if you have a theory of your own that's better than this one, and how could it not be, leave it down there too. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next exciting episode of Debunked right here on CBR. Thanks for watching.